Hey guys, this is Andrea. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Andrea. I talk about the NDIS, a uh, disability care scheme in Australia, and generally living with a disability. And this is something I want to touch on. And just, I had an experience this morning. I was out and about with a support worker. And guys, there was some things that happened in that and it showed me that we need to remember that support workers aren't human. That care for another adult is it one of the most difficult jobs in the world. And yes, I have been open in criticising bad support workers. Um, I won't back down from that. But this support worker has got me through some very, very, very dark times in my life. Uh, there was an incident, won't go into details because it's still, fallout is still happening from it, but it just reminded me that support workers need rest, they need good training and they need good backup from their office. And I saw the direct fallout from not having good backup support from their office, from their rostering officer essentially this actually really isn't that hard to do and i've been horrified in researching for this video to put out this afternoon that a rostering officer that's different names um rostering officer or sag or communications officer if you're with an agency as some common ones but they are the people who roster your support workers uh, type of thing, coordinate your care team. They are com within the agency of support workers. They're totally different to a support coordinator as well. So they are basically a middle manager of supporting your care team. They're the person that is the barrier between your care team and the support workers type of thing to give them that professional boundary but I learnt today that the law has actually changed that they don't actually have to have experience as a support worker let me say that later and for the people in the back they actually don't have to have experience as a support worker so that means they can come into an office role and not understand that the trauma that they're causing by shifting people. Um, this is one of the key reasons that I'm actually leaving this agency is because there wasn't a continuous quality of care. So there was no consistency in support worker, no consistency in timing to the point that I've actually had a very, very long discussion with my doctor and I'm going on some medication for mental health. Um, we worked out that there's some pain issues there as well, but it is also trauma that has been resurfaced by this care agency. But this support worker, over and above, has helped time and time and time again. And I saw her in tears because she was trying to protect herself. She was trying to protect her client, do the right thing by the client. But we could see through all of that, they were pushing her to finish the shift. This care agency, because of what I put out online, what I've said behind the scenes, boundaries that I've put out there, in demanding a high level quality of care, I think, not sure, don't come at me, I think are a bit wary of me. But it would have been a lot better for everyone if they were a bit wary of me from the beginning. Because they could have provided excellent care then. Not trying to scramble and ask for forgiveness, etc. Doesn't work like that. So 
this is just one thing that if you have someone in your life, whether it's professionally who's a support worker, whether it's a family or friend who works as a support worker, nurse, anything human facing, check in on them, see how they're doing. Because they become so good at masking, so good at pushing things down, that it's not until they snap that anyone knows that there's anything wrong. So guys, look after each other and be kind to each other. Like, I know I have my moments. I get exceedingly angry, I get exceedingly frustrated. Um, but support is something that is evolving and we need to have a frank and honest discussion about everyone's role from support workers to roster of care officers to support coordination to housing officers to the CEOs of the support agencies. They all need a good grounding in disability and I'm actually realising that I'm comparing apples with oranges with the way I compare myself. I've been comparing myself with my non-disabled peers for far too long and they haven't got the trauma, both medical or emotional trauma, around having to organise care, around having to give up work, having to constantly rebuild your life and around just feeling safe to express who you are and not knowing the response that you're going to get when you ask for help. So let me just finish on a bit more of a positive note that the support worker in question is totally fine. We've established that everything's in the process happening but Guys, people, and we had a discussion about workplaces, people don't leave bad workplaces. They leave bad bosses. And this care agency has had three mass walkouts in the past three years. That should be telling them something. So people, yes, there is something systemically wrong in their systems and what their slogan is and what they deliver don't actually match up and we see that this is why they can't keep good staff they're constantly putting on new people and having clients walk out because they're not getting continuous care and that's a breach of the service delivery guarantee so guys please be kind to each other we're coming into a really difficult season when people go back to school back to work we just need to be gentle with each other gentle with our words and respect and step back and think and please if you can if you can like share and subscribe and celebrate with me 20 subscribers that for me is huge 20 subscribers 29 watch hours that to me as a micro channel is huge and I'm going to put it out there there's some organizations that I'm doing some research with if you're opening to doing working with me sponsorships open to talking with me um, you can find my details on the about me playlist page